President Biden announcing today that the U.S. will ban all imports of Russian fuel in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The U.S. is far less dependent on Russia for fuel than other nations, but the president indicated the action sends a strong message to Russian leader Vladimir Putin. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. This is a move that has strong bipartisan support in the Congress and I believe in the country. Americans have rallied, support, have rallied to support the Ukrainian people and made it clear we will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. Today's action comes after pleas from Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky to put more economic pressure on Russia. President Biden also called on Congress to pass a $12 billion aid package for Ukraine. On this 13th day of the Russian invasion, Ukrainian forces are holding on to control of the capital city, Kyiv. But in Maripol in the south, officials say civilians are trapped and struggling to get food and water as Russia's military continues its bombardment. Ukrainian officials say Russia is violating ceasefire agreements on some escape routes, although people have been able to evacuate from the eastern city of Sumy. About two million Ukrainians have now fled their country, according to the U.N. Our Joanna Gagas spoke with Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill about these latest developments. Congresswoman Cheryl, this morning we saw President Biden announce that the U.S. would ban Russian imports of oil. Uh, we've also seen several companies recently, oil companies, do the same. Do you believe at this point that this further step will make a difference, will deter Putin? You know, this is really hitting Putin where it hurts um, with gas. Uh, and we're, we're looking at longer term disinvestment from Russian gas, which I think is um, something he has to be taking into account because this isn't just uh, near-term sanctions. This is long-term investments that that we're looking at um, companies across the world really disinvesting from um, some of the drilling that's going on, um, some of the new oil fields that people are exploring. So uh, this certainly has to have caught Putin's eye and I think really helps the world put pressure on him to end this unprovoked war against Ukraine. And yet, even with the pressure that's already been put on him, he only seems to be doubling down. Um, this weekend, we saw increased calls for this no-fly zone. Ukrainians calling for NATO, uh, the UN, the United States to cover the Ukraine skies, which essentially means shooting down Russian planes. At what point do you see that being a viable option? I was in Ukraine a couple weeks ago working hard on the measures we were taking um, as we were uniting with our EU and NATO allies to try to um, show Putin that this was a bad idea. I, I said before, and I continue to believe he's truly miscalculated um, this invasion and what it would cost him and cost the Russian people. So it's up to us to continue to keep that pressure on him so he withdraws. We are not at a point um, that, that we think, uh, we the United States, thinks that a no-fly zone would be a good idea. That involves shooting out um, Russian air traffic control stations. So when people think about this, I think they're just really wanting very much to help the Ukrainian people, help the Ukrainian government, but I think what we're talking about and the reason we've not taken that step, nor do I support that step, is because we are worried about getting into a hot war with Russia. And we've heard Putin discuss the use of nuclear weapons. I do think that to date was saber rattling to remind people he has those nuclear weapons, but I don't think we should underestimate um, Putin's will to use those. We need to be very careful about the calculations um, that we take with respect to that. Speaking of underestimating him, there are concerns now that Ukraine is just the first step in the countries that, that he wants to obtain. Do you feel that those concerns are founded? Do you think that Poland possibly could be next? Well, you know, when we're talking about a state like Poland, we're talking about members of NATO, and that is a very different calculation for the United States. So if Putin attacked Poland, Romania, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, that would incite an attack against Russia. And he knows that. 
And we've been very clear. In fact, our Secretary of Defense uh, said that we will not cede one inch of NATO territory. And I think Putin has heard that. I do not think he will violate that. But if he does, make no mistake, that will incite a different response. Do you believe that Americans will continue to be supportive of the president's efforts, of NATO's efforts, um, even as the prices of gas here at home continue to rise? We need to look at ways that we're, we're trying to uh, mitigate the effects on the American public and the European public. So doing things like I have called to um, have a gas tax holiday, to bring prices at the pump down um, while we address this, to release more oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve so we can continue to bring prices down. We need to look at the long term. So we need to, I think, take steps, not just for our environment, but also for our national security to mitigate our reliance on fossil fuels. Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill, thank you so much. Thank you.